What's up, seventh graders? It's Mrs. Talati here representing Mrs. Servati. Um, today we are covering 7.1, which is one step in equalities. Now, I want to preface this by saying this is definitely a roll off or a spin off of equations. Um, we're going to take it one step further, but you do follow uh, similar steps in solving um, inequalities as you do equations. Okay, so your essential understanding for today is I can use inverse operations to solve and graph one step inequalities. Remember, the inverse of addition is subtraction, the inverse of multiplication is division. Okay, so now we're looking at, you guys remember back in elementary school, it's the alligator. The greater than, the less than, greater than or equal to and less than or equal to, which I'm going to just kind of go here, greater than, we're gonna go less than. Now, those of you guys, um, if you remember from class today, if you have a greater than or less than, um, that is going to be an open circle, okay? So an example of this might be that um, x is greater than six. Remember that x can be six. It's gonna be an open circle and x can be anything bigger or to the right of six, okay? So again, greater than means it's bigger um, it does not include the number six, therefore it is an open circle. Um, we'll use the same kind of inequalities for x is less than six. We can go here, still a positive six, open circle, but now it's less than, which means x can be five, four, three, two, all into the negatives, right? Well, the second that I add the equal sign to it, um, gosh, I didn't leave myself enough room, so let's go here. This one's gonna be greater than Whoa, Talani, you guys tell me to take a break, huh? Forgot all my stuff. Greater than or equal to, okay? If it's greater than or equal to, and make your notes please a little bit nicer than this, I just did not leave myself in a room. That is going to be a closed circle because now x can be six or anything thereafter. So it could be six, seven, eight, nine, and please remember that that arrow does include fractions and decimals. So it's everything to the right of six. Well, then if we go less than or equal to, this one I have a little bit more room to, less than or equal to, <clears throat> this one can be a closed circle, and then again, it can be six or anything to the left of six. So it could be uh, negative 5.25, right? We're talking about fractions and decimals, anything to the left of six, okay? Now, as we get into solving these, um, we are going to follow the same rules as equations, but then we're going to take it one step further when it comes to the graphing. So the addition property of equality basic, basically says that, let's just say I have an example like x minus 3 um, is less than 5. If I add the same number to both sides, my statement will remain true. Okay. And then the same thing goes with subtraction. These will make more sense once we get into solving them um, in the next slide. So if you guys take a look, our next one, you guys can see, and I'm gonna write this out in this open space right here. I'm just gonna rewrite this out as it would look in module six, which is this, okay? So again, when we were in module six, we would draw our balance bars. We identify that we are gonna solve for the X, so we would subtract five from both sides. In this case, we would say that x equals a negative 17, right? Well, think about it. If x is negative 17, on a number line, it would just be a negative 17 and a dot because that's what x is, right? So this is where we are then applying it to inequalities. So I can set it up the exact same way. I am going to solve by subtracting five from both sides. Now I'm gonna say that x is gonna be less than negative 17. That means x, can be any number less than negative 17. Okay, if I write that out in words, if I go, oh, my number line doesn't go that far. So I'm just gonna extend this here and say negative 17 is going to be an open circle. This does not include the number 17 because it does not have an equal sign. So that means it could be anything to the left up. Okay, it means it could be negative 18, negative 19, Okay, now remember, the bigger you get to the negatives, the lesser their value is, okay? So that would be an open circle to the left. Not too bad, right? Okay, well we do the same thing when it comes to 
uh, subtraction. I'm going to uh, solve for the y, so I look at my negative 3, or my subtract 3, and I'm going to do the inverse of it. These 3's cancel out, so I'm left with y is greater than or equal to 11. Now this is where I need you guys to understand that you read from the variable over. If I wanted to rewrite this, you see how my alligator sign is eating the y? If I wanted to reverse it, it's still going to stay the same thing. I need you to understand that if you read from the variable over, that means y is greater than, oh my gosh, you guys, I really cannot, greater than or equal to a positive 11. Okay, so if I go to my number line, we did not get good number lines on here, did we? Okay, I'm just going to scratch this. I'm going to draw my own so that it makes more sense. And I don't need the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm just going to identify that it's a positive 11. That it's going to be a closed circle because it is equal to, right? And if I go back and I read my variable, y is greater. That means y can be 11.5, 15, 212, whatever it is. y is bigger. I should probably go back and fix this so it actually looks like a word. If anybody missed that, okay? So y is greater than or equal to 11. So again, we should probably have a little cheat sheet in the sense that if it's greater than or less than, open circle. That means that number is not included in the subset, okay? If it is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, it's a closed circle because that number is included. Okay, again, very important and a big difference between the two. All right, take a look at uh, multiplication and division. So remember, this is a quotient, this is a fraction, which means it's division. So if I want to undo my fraction, remember I'm gonna ultimately multiply by the reciprocal, which is three over one, and whatever I do to one side, I do to the other side. Well, these threes cancel out, and y is going to be greater than or equal to a positive 15. So then on my number line, and again, you guys, we do not need you to spend your time wanting to do drawing all the tick marks. If you identify this zero and identify that five is a or 15 is a positive number, let's just even go, you can even go five, 10. We don't need you to, but we want you to identify that it's positive. It's going to be a closed circle because it's equal to, and this one says it's greater than, which means it goes to the right. Okay, that means that y can be anything 15 and above. So it could be 15, 16, 17, 18.1, 20.7. I was going to say 7, and my brain was going to say 6. It can be anything, okay? So it's a group of numbers versus, it's not even a group, it's an infinite number of answers versus an equal sign where it's one answer. Okay, now this one I wish I could shout from the rooftops because this is one exception to the rule. So if you look at this, oh, okay, let's think about this. So this is division, or multiplication, right? I have a negative four times x. So in order to undo multiplication, I'm going to divide so that my variable stays a positive, meaning I want this x to be a positive. But now because I am dividing by a negative, I have to flip my sign. So. This is one we're going to put like in, in bold. When you multiply or divide by a negative number, that means the number with the variable, you must reverse your inequality symbol to make the statement true. Okay, and actually this will make a lot more sense for those of you guys who want to take a look. If you look at page 203 in your workbook, in fact, that will be your little test. Those of you guys who are watching this video, Bring to class. See who's really paying attention, huh? Okay, so bring worksheet two or three to class, and now we'll go over it as to the why, okay? So when I divide a positive by a negative, I have a positive 52 
divided by a 4 goes in 1, 12. I get a positive divided by a negative, which is a negative. Okay? So again, to go into my number line, I'm just going to draw a little one down here. I have a 0. Now I'm going to the left for a negative 13. It's an open circle to the left. Okay? So again, please write this rule down. Underline it, highlight it, bold it. Bring 103 to class because it's going to be very important for you to understand why this rule is the rule that it is. Um, yeah, bring that one. That, no, sorry, did I say 103? I meant 203. Okay. And now we got to be able to apply it to the word problems, right? So this one says that a submarine, or a marine, sorry, submerges, oh my gosh, a marine submersible descends more than 40 feet below sea level. As it descends from sea level, the change in elevation is negative 5 feet per second. For how many seconds does it descend? So I want you guys to pay attention uh, to the wording, right? So we have a marine submersible descends. And you just can see in here, we have a lot that it's going to go down. It's going to be uh, more than... Well, and I'm going to show you it's more than the 40 feet here because it's greater than 40, <coughs> or less than 40, sorry. Um, actually, you know what, let's, let's, let's back this up without the sign because I don't want to confuse you. So I just highlighted or underlined that, and then the change in elevation is negative 5 feet per second, okay? So I'm going to add here that the final um, elevation is greater than 40 feet. You guys kind of got to think uh, ahead of the game in this one because of the idea that this is a negative here. Okay? Um, and then our second one is going to be the rate at which we descend or descend. The rate of descent um, equals negative 5 feet per second. Okay, so we have this negative, sorry, this is negative 5 feet per, we'll use an S even though I don't like to. No, I don't even want to because S is confusion. Let's use a X, okay? So negative 5, what this x is going to represent is the number of um, uh, feet per second, right? Or the number of seconds, I should say. And so if we know that we need it to be here, I'm going to write it here because what's happening is when that rule that I just taught you guys, if I divide both sides by the negative 5, that is then going to flip the sign that I needed in my answer, right? So then it's going to be x is greater than 8. Now 8 has to be, this is another thing you guys got to think about. Time has to be a positive value, right? You can't go backwards in time. Therefore, we need that 8 to be positive. So in order for it to be positive, we have to divide a negative by a negative. So then we can write this as a sentence. The submersible, submersible, uh, The <coughs> V sends for more than eight seconds. Okay, so if we go back here and label some stuff, this is feet descending or feet descend. The X is the Remember how we did this in the equation writing? Number of seconds, and then this is the total number of feet descended. Okay, I think a little tricky when we have to write them, but in the end, we want it to be greater than, which is more than eight seconds. Okay, so now listen. I'm just going to give you guys a heads up. This is a number four is a subtraction, number five is an addition. 
I'm going to highlight or circle, star. These are two that follow the rule. Um, big deal, right? Because it completely changes the way you graph it, completely changes your answer, all of the things. So please pay attention that when you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to flip the sign. And again, bring page 203 to class tomorrow, all right? You guys have a great day.